Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews, and convention panels. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, assigned to Ragnarok Story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Get started here. Yes. Okay, so, thank you for coming. This is uh, pretty much fight scenes and how to tell a story with them. Movies aren't just, uh, I'm sorry, fight scenes aren't just to fight in a movie. Like you've seen a lot of you know, martial arts movies, you've seen a lot of action movies where there's fighting, and you're like, okay, that's cool, but like, why are they fighting? Okay, so let's take, for instance, uh, everyone here has seen John Wick, right? Okay, the reason he's doing what he's doing is why? His dog got killed, right? And that's what set him up, uh, over the edge. So the whole movie, the reason why he's doing all that is because he has a purpose. His dog was murdered by these guys. His car was stolen, but what did it was his dogs, his dog. So he's not just going and saying, okay, I see this guy, let me... Let me shoot him. I see this guy. Let me beat him up. He's not doing that. There's a purpose behind everything he's doing. Every move that he's doing. Why he's using his gun at that moment. Why he's deciding to punch this guy at that moment. Um, You'll see also, when you're telling a story with fight choreography, it has to literally make sense. Um, For instance, let's just say, what's your name? Erica. Erica. Let's say me and Erica are in a scene. And we had an argument, you know, the day before in, this, uh, in, in another scene. And, you know, we're going to fight it out. So do I just walk up to her and punch her? No. I walk up to her like, hey, do you remember the argument we just had? Yeah, I didn't really like that argument. Okay. And it's going to lead to her saying something. And then that gives us that reason to, that we're fighting. You know, we're not just... Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I see you in the streets. I'm gonna fight you. You know, we don't we don't do any of that stuff. We had to have it make sense. Um, and also, for an instance, you see a martial arts movie. You'll see a guy point at another guy, and you know that's that's obviously in every martial arts movie they're gonna fight because the guy points. It's it's that's just what it is. <laughs> um, so the guy points. You'll see the reaction, and Jackie Chan does this a lot, you'll see the reaction to that finger. You know, so the guy points, the other guy looks at it, looks back at the guy, that's the reason to fight. He's telling that story, like, well, you just insulted me by pointing at me and yelling at me. So, you know, Jackie Chan or whoever is not just going to the guy, the guy's not just gonna walk up and just, boom, I'm hitting you because I wanna challenge you. You know, he's gonna, oh, you killed my father, or, you did this, and it's that point that initiates the story of that fight. You know, point, look, look back, we're fighting. And everyone knows why, because that guy, Erica, Erica pointed at me, I already knew that we were enemies, but that moment you pointed at me is the moment we're engaging. And the audience knows, they're like, uh-oh, uh-oh, he pointed, or she pointed at him, they're gonna fight, uh-oh, let's sit back, you know. So already there's a story behind it, okay? You don't just see uh, punching, kicking, guns, just cause. You know, I can just walk, I can, I can write a scene in a film, a guy walks up and shoots 10 people. Why? You know, I'm looking at the script, oh, this looks cool, but if we actually made it into a film, people are gonna be like, what happened? Like, what, what is this about? Why did he do that? You know, I don't get it. It's just, it's an action movie, but I don't I don't get it. Even in the cheesiest action movies you'll see, you'll see that it makes sense. Except like, what was it called? Um, 
Samurai Cop. Have you guys seen that movie? <laughs> yeah. I don't recommend it. <laughs> 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 you know, it's, it, it, he's fighting the fight. But um, there's a there's a movie, and I, I highly recommend this one. It's called King of the Kickboxers with Lauren Avedon. Uh, Billy Blanks is in it. Um, there's a whole purpose behind that. So in, Lauren, in the film, Lauren Avedon, as a kid, saw his brother get killed uh, by Billy Blanks. So the whole movie, you know, he becomes a cop. He does this and this. And he finds out that uh, Billy Blanks is this fighter that's killing everybody. So in his stop, my brother, so I'm going to go travel over here to stop Billy Blanks from doing what he's doing. And that's the story. So when they fight, you know it's personal. You know, if Billy Blanks hadn't killed his brother in that film and they were fighting just because, oh, we got to stop this guy from fighting, like, why? You know, just leave it alone. You know, so the fight and when the fight is put together, it's a personal fight. It's not just, I'm going to punch you. Cool, you're going to block it. You're going to kick. I'm going to block it. No, it's a personal fight between Lauren Avedon and Billy Blanks in that movie. And you can tell, in, not just with the dialogue, cheesy dialogue, by the way, but you can tell that the fight between them is personal because Billy Blanks realizes, oh, you're the dude's brother that I killed because he pulls out a picture and says, you know, you've had me in hell for the past 10 years and shows him the picture. He's like, oh, now I get it why you're here. So that story alone is that made that fight real personal. And if that, that element wasn't there, they would just be fighting and you would get bored with it. And there's a lot of movies where you're just bored with the fighting. So like I said, Samurai Cop, that movie, horrible. <laughs> how not to do yeah how not to do a fight scene um any, anybody have any questions so far nope oh yeah <clears throat> well i can think of exceptions to what you're saying for instance in the very beginning of dirty harry mm -hmm. you have a sniper on a roof you have no idea what he's doing mm -hmm. he just kills someone yeah um now discovering what is going on with that is the drama of the story so the sometimes yes you just have people come out of the, the woodwork and kill someone yeah yeah and when that happens, of course, the audience is like, why, you know, why do you do that? And then it turns into something else. You're like, I get it now, you know. That's the guy's nuts. Yeah, <laughs> he's nuts, you know, and, and that's that's a perfect you know, example of, you know, storytelling. Um, the sniper, the um, in Dirty Hair, you know, I haven't seen that movie in a while, so I'm not trying to, you know, think about it. Um, let's see what other kind of movies that don't involve martial arts. Um, Equilibrium. Um, with uh, um, played Batman, Christian Bale. Uh, in that movie, it's all about guns and martial arts, but he uses his guns mostly. Every single fight is a story, you know, and, and it's it's great because he doesn't just walk in, like I said, and shooting people. He's actually using martial arts with the guns, and you know why he's doing it. And in this movie, it's a spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. Um, you're not allowed to have emotions in this and wherever they're at. So they're pretty much, you know, emotion cops, right? If I'm... Those are like zombies. Yeah, they're like zombies. <laughs> so if you show emotions, then that's pretty much a sin. And so he starts developing emotions. He pretty much goes against his own uh, force. And he's telling the story with the guns fighting everybody else. Like, okay, I have emotions. My kid has emotions. You're trying to kill us. And that's the story. Everything's personal with him, with with uh, when he's fighting, when he's using his guns. That's all personal, and it's still a story. Even if there was no dialogue, you can tell what he's doing, and that's important. If this was a silent movie, you you'd be able to tell why he's doing it. You know, with the facial expression, you'd be able to tell the story without having the dialogue, and that's what you're trying to get out of a fight scene without dialogue, and that's very very important to do. Otherwise, your movie is just a movie with punching and kicking, or just guns, and you want to figure out why, you know? So, any, anybody else? And it's got awesome fight scenes. Awesome, awesome fight, fight scenes. scenes. Awesome fight scenes, yes. I, I can't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, also, first, I've been doing fight choreography for, for years. I've worked with um, people who 
just want to have a fight in their movie. I've worked with people who want me to tell a story and when it comes to the people like, hey, can can I punch this guy? Or can I do this? And I got to step up and say, well, what's the point behind it? It doesn't say why in the script. You just want to throw in that fight. Like, what's the point behind it? Oh, no point. I just, I just want to throw in a punch in there to make my character look cool. I mean, I could, but you're, you're going to lose the audience, you know? You know, just this is a love story. Why would you do that? You know, um, there is a there's also a scene, uh, not a scene. I'm sorry, a time where I was choreographing a big fight scene for a big martial arts film, and the guy who I was fighting, his son was like, "I think you should do this. I think you should do that," and I'm like, "It's not gonna." keep with the story it's not going to tell a story if i'm just doing this he's like no i think and you know at that point i was like talking to his dad and i was like hey look i know it's your son but can you tell him to back off a little bit because i'm trying to tell a story with this fight that me and you were about to have and whatnot and he's like yeah i'm sorry but but the fact is like i'm trying to tell a story with you because you and your zombie because the movie idea was called the z it's like about fighting zombies but they're not the, the, the normal zombies you see it's just a hybrid of humans that are super strong and whatnot but this guy the story i just run into him and i kick his butt that's just what the story is and behind that is a bunch of um zombies came in crashed a party and they started killing everybody so me just coming up to him taking him out quick that's part of the story um he didn't want to do that after his his son was saying stuff. He was like, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? And it's, it's not going to make sense for us to do it that way. We're not going to have a dragged out fight scene just because you want to have one. It has to make sense. You're just, in this story, you're just on the bottom of the totem pole. So that's why you get taken out real fast. And he didn't understand that. I was like, it's just part of the story. Just it's, I had to tell a story. And I tried to explain that to people. Fight, fighting in movies is not just fighting. It's I'm telling somebody what I'm doing in the movie and why so they can understand it. It's hard. It really is hard. Um, there's There's been many times where um, I've seen even Jackie Chan get frustrated for the same reasons where somebody is not following directions. So he's either fired them or he's tried to train them on the set and he doesn't you know, it's Jackie Chan. He's either going to fire you or you're going to get fired. You know? <laughs> so um, there's only one time where I've seen him keep the guy on set and he just replaced it with somebody else who knew what they were, they were doing. And that guy got lucky. So, um, And if you have any input or anything, just go ahead and interrupt me. It's fine. And, I have a question. Yeah. What goes into the craft of, of building a play scene where you, the director, the writer, are trying to determine what extent of bodily injuries to show and how to show it as a result of the fighting. You know what I mean? I, I think I do so pretty much saying, um, I mean, let me see if I get this The right. emotional impact yeah. to the viewer. And how to show it. How to show it and to what extent. Like sometimes I think they go overboard, sometimes I think they do it just right. Right. Is there a process that filmmakers go through? Uh, yes, and it's called training. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Very well said. Yeah, um, it's called, it's what we call selling, like the emotion. Um, you had to sell your emotion. You had to sell the injury, um, and it depends on what's happening. Okay, so let's just say, uh, what's your name? Me. Yes, I'm Chris. Chris, let's just say Chris and I were in a fight scene. Obviously, he's bigger than me. Right, so if you were to punch me, my selling would be a little bit over the top because I'm a small guy compared to him. I see. You know, um, you'll see my face contort in a weird way, you know, on purpose, obviously, unless you really hit me. Um, you'll you'll hear me make a noise, you know, as compared to if you were to hit me, it'd be totally different, you know. It's, it's all in the train, it's all in the selling. Um, it's all in the timing also. 
So if your timing is off with putting together a fight, then people will get hurt for real. And um, that's why the training is more important. You know? Yeah, like sometimes I see the camera, like, like Marvel movies, make, mm -hmm. they make much hay out of physical injuries and what they look like. Yeah. And I see the extent of it, and I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's intense, but you ought to be dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, uh, she brought up a good, um, as I'm years and years out of training and dates, so no, you would have no trouble kicking my ass. However, <laughs> um, when I uh, see someone take a cannon punch to the kidneys, I'm sorry, he would go down and stay down. Yeah. Instead, he keeps fighting for five more minutes. Right. And I'm like, how the hell is he doing that? <laughs> it's called movie magic. <laughs> yeah. Suspension of static So um, I don't do uh, movies. I write books. But so I have a question. What is a realistic length of time that somebody can fight for? Because, I mean, like... 45 minutes of fighting. 45 minutes. <laughs> uh, it, it depends. So in a real street fight, okay, okay. if that's what you're asking, Let's start there. Okay. In a real street fight, two untrained guys will probably last no more than three minutes. Okay. That's okay. That's even if their adrenaline is flowing. Okay. And if they've had some training? Like if, they, if they had training, since their conditioning will be better, I would say at least they can go about five minutes. <clears throat> How much wow. yelling and screaming goes before it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I actually can provide some input on the length of time, too. Um, I watch a lot of, like, mixed martial arts no. from mm -hmm. not just what, American organizations, but internationally, and mm -hmm. some of them don't have time limits. Mm -hmm. The longest fight that I've seen went 11 minutes, and they literally stopped and took a break in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> like, the two guys were just like, okay, <laughs> okay. Let's take a minute. Okay, we're good. Right? Um, okay. And, uh, like, when you involve a weapon, 11 to 14 seconds is typical for, like, the world. Wow. So those 30-minute fight scenes are not... Yeah, that's right. That's right. I was going to say, how much do you say on an unscripted, just a street fight, mm -hmm. how much positioning, yelling, screaming, posturing do you put in before that? That yeah. leads up to the physical fight. <coughs> Before the, for a movie, yeah. Um, it's not the you know you you script that out the the posturing and the, the, the yelling and what it just comes, you know. That's the so. backstory of what it happened. Yeah, it's yeah. the setup. The story is yeah. the setup to the fight. Yeah. yeah so. Well, it's, it's like in uh, Romeo and Juliet. Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? Yes, I bite my thumb at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All posturing. <laughs> Well, you're trying to avoid the fight, right? You're hoping to puff up and fluff your feathers and show your claws if the other person backs down so you don't have to try and fight for three whole minutes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I forget which movie, but I saw the most beautiful spin kick I've ever seen done by a human being. But I asked my instructor at that time, this is about 30 years ago, he said, um, would that actually happen? And when he says, never in this world. In real fights, you use small, deceptive, quick movements. You don't leave yourself open yeah, right. that long. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's, that's actually telling the story. You, you, take, you throw a high kick in a real fight, you're going to go down. It's that's your story. <laughs> that's why I never throw a high kick. <laughs> Ever in a fight. And I've only been in three, two in my life. Yes. Um, I don't know if I'm wording it right, but in no. like a fight scene, um, what is your least favorite injury that people get up from? Ooh. The least favorite injury? Yeah, like something happens to them and they still get up and you're just looking at it like, like you're no. pet peeve. Yeah, like you should be dead or you should be on the floor. Like, shot yeah. the What's the worst thing? Like they get shot through the shoulder, but they just get up and they keep fighting for the next 15 minutes. Yes. Um, the, two of them, actually. So one is um, the good guy getting shot with maybe like Steven Seagal for instance. <laughs> <laughs> Dude got shot with a shotgun in Out for Justice, hit the wall and kept coming back and just forgot about the shotgun shot. You know, like he wasn't wincing or nothing. I'm like, 
<laughs> and then still really out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand, but it's Steven Seagal. What are you going to do? Yeah. Um, and the second one is what I see in a movie, uh, the guy, like, you know, the main bad guy and the main good guy fighting, like, the good guy or bad guy would hit the dude, the other one in the throat, mm -hmm. you know, like, punch him or one of these. And you know, backs up, starts coughing, and it gets right back in the fight. I'm like, no, yeah. no, I don't, I don't believe that. Well, that that would just take you down longer. Oh yeah, if not kill you. <laughs> if, yeah, if, if your windpipe is crushed, you're not gonna fight yeah. anymore. You get you know, that choking you're... sensation when you try to breathe. You know, and and I and I see movies where guys get stabbed and have a sword or a knife in them, and they're still going. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like. I don't ever want to choreograph a fight that way because I like my stuff being realistic. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'll probably do some comedy fights too, and I have, but realistically, I'm not going to have a guy standing there with a sword in his chest and still <laughs> throwing a punch, you know. Um, but then that brings me to another thing, which is this is probably off subject a little bit, but um, the movie The Punisher, mm. the actual movie, not, not mm. the Bernthal. When he's fighting the guy, the Russian, who's played by Kevin Nash, um, in that scene, he stabs Kevin Nash right here with a, a knife. Mm -hmm. That knife was real. He got stabbed for real oh, right there. And that selling was real. He, he just looked at the knife and pulled it out. I would have screamed and I would have yelled, cut. <laughs> I just got stabbed with a real knife. You know, and. Uh, was that near your heart? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, and then when I found out that was real, and Kevin Nash just looked at it and pulled it out, I was like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the, obviously the actor that stabbed him didn't know until he was told, and of course he felt bad. But Kevin Nash was just, <laughs> right? you know, he's a professional wrestler. If you guys don't know who Kevin Nash is, um, but yeah, I would, I, I would never, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Well, I've seen a movie where the protagonist is engaged in a gunfight, takes a shot here. He goes down. Mm -hmm. He's bleeding. He's crawling along the floor. This arm is useless, and he's in pain. I went, okay, I believe that. <laughs> yeah, and those, I like those movies where it's like realistic, and that's part of a real story. If I were to get, if I'm in a gunfight and I get shot, I'm not using this arm anymore because it hurts too much. You know, I'm not even going to use it to reload. I'll find some way to, you know, reload, you know, if I have to. Or if I have to use it, I'm going to, you know, do one of these. Because I've hurt my arm before. You know, we all try and move it as best as we can. Um, but like I said, I need to have realistic fight scenes or something that, that people will believe. Uh, if, if I'm going to choreograph something with a gunshot and... The director's like, well, I want the good guy to get right back up from that bazooka shot to the chest. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's not going to happen, sir. You know, or what, you know, this also pertains to, to action and explosions and stuff. Because I've done those too. The good guy is in a building. Someone throws a grenade or whatever, blows up the building. And the good guy walks out, you know. <laughs> I'm not gonna say like walks out, but he, you know, he's fine. There's no scratches like Van Damme, Jean Claude Van Damme. He's a perfect example of something blowing up or him blowing up in something, and his hair is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> There's no scratches on him, you know. You don't believe that. That's not a story. You're just saying that he's invincible. There is no, no such thing as anybody being invincible. In a movie, I don't care if you're an A lister. At least try and make this realistic. You know, I've worked with, with A listers, and, you know, like for instance, um, Michael Jai White. I consider him an A lister, but nobody really does. But he's, he's such a cool guy. But, you know, he he's talking to me, and he's, he's the type of guy that will, you know, not bad mouth him. He's a, he's a great guy, but he's the guy, type of guy that would hit a stuntman for real, mm. you know. And some stuntmen don't like him. <laughs> no. But I mean, Steven Seagal was also would would hit them. But he would he would do it on purpose just because he was Steven Seagal. But um, the fights that he did, he would he would always say like, you know, I, I want this to be realistic. That's why I hit them. I'm like, oh, 
I don't. I mean, okay, but still. <laughs> like, these guys, okay, they're stumbling, they get paid to get hit. Not for real, but if you hit them, they still get paid for it. But in order to make it look real, and you should know this, that you don't have to hit them to okay. make it look real. They, this is the selling, you know, but who was I to, you know, talk to this guy that way? He's he's up here and I'm down here, you know. Um, did you? Yeah, um, talking about realism, a lot of TV shows and probably movies as well, they always want to show the guy run through this with the sword and the sword comes out the back or they get shot with the arrow and the arrow comes out the front. Is that, like, how how plausible is that? Depends on the arrowheads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it depends on where it's it lands. Uh, the other way yeah, whether well, or not it hits rubber bone or whatever. But I mean, it seems like every time it's like, nope, all the way through. That's dramatic. Yeah, it yeah. is. You know he's not getting up for that, usually. But after some shows, after a while, you're like, yep, I know it's coming. Just right watch back. Just watch forged and fire. So yeah. Different weapons go through forged. <laughs> That's what I was going to recommend, actually, is uh, Forge and Fire, the weapon demonstrations they do. Are Deadly really Warriors. Perspective on what they do. There's also a lot of demonstrations mm -hmm. on YouTube where people do demonstrations with, uh, they make ballistic gels and torsos that have oh, yeah. artificial yeah. bone in them. And they do a really good job. With it's absolutely terrifying, terrifying how he uh, So my least Forge favorite type fire? of scene and is where for, the, the protagonist uh, it's actually on is channel. running through the house, uh, basically being chased the by and then they some guy. She picks up a skillet, smacks him, and he goes paper, down, paper and then she runs. She ought to hit him at least 15 more times. It come while they're down. Exactly. How in bar fights they'll like break bottles over people's heads and the bottle will shatter. Yeah, but it's and the person will keep fighting, but it's like. No, yeah. you, you no. break a you hit someone with a bottle. Good chance the bottle's not going to break, but the person's head might. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if you break the bottle, that's a really bad sign. <laughs> you never saw a pet yes. labyrinth then. <laughs> no, true. From a storytelling perspective, what are like what would be three fight scenes in movies that you feel really did a great job of storytelling just within the fight scene? Just within the fight scene. Oh man. <laughs> John Wick. Yeah, that's one of them. John Wick. Um, well, is there a particular to... scene in John Wick? What's that? Is there a particular scene in the John Wick movies? Uh, the particular scene, uh, not I really. It's just his his fighting. Only scene I didn't like is the the end scene uh, with the John Wick Part One when he's fighting the the main bad guy. Because he gets hit by a car and he still gets up and walks to the bad guy. That's the only thing I didn't like. Yeah. But everything, uh, the every other fight that was put together for that, that you know, mm -hmm. that was just spot on for storytelling. Number two would be uh, Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's on that island for a reason, and the fighting, obviously mm -hmm. phenomenal. And another one would be. Um, Jackie Chan's, um, I think it's called Return of the Drunken Master, or it's one of the, there's so many Drunken Masters. <laughs> I've seen the first three. Yeah. So I, I believe it's that one. Uh, I believe it's Return of the Drunken Master. But those three would be my top favorite fight scenes throughout, throughout the movie. You know, so yes, I, I love those. And I was going to say something, but I totally forgot what it was. <laughs> what, how about your three worst? <laughs> three worst fight scenes? <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to say, and, and this, this hurts to say it, um, double team with uh, Rob, Jen, Dennis Rodman and Dan Dan. Every fight scene in that one. Because I, I was a big fan of Van Dan. But when they added Robin, yeah. so I'm just gonna say the movie, the, <laughs> the double team. Uh, the second worst fight scene I've seen. Um, well, let's just say Samurai Cop. Um, everything in that one. And the third. Man, this I've seen so many old ones. I can't pick. It's, they were forgettable. Yeah, yeah they, they were forgettable. <laughs> It's just, I, I can't. Um, 
Do cartoons count? No. Yes. Do cartoons count? Yes, always. Okay. <laughs> always. <laughs> All right. So I would have to say then, um, and it's gonna and if I if I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> 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 um, <coughs> I'm gonna say what what part the part of the cell games that you know you guys are familiar with that, um, where he's just squashing everybody, you know, and and I'm, you guys probably haven't seen, but I know. You know, they're familiar with it, right? Yeah. With the uh, Dragon Ball Z cell games, it's just a big tournament, and one guy is defeating everybody, and like, okay, and then it takes a little kid. To, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I love Dragon Ball Z, but it <laughs> takes a little kid to destroy <laughs> this guy. So, um, it was, but it was one of the great episodes of that show. Um, but yes, so those three best, three worst, and. Uh, Oh, I forgot to add. Have anybody seen the movie uh, Jet Li's The One? Mm-hmm. Okay. The end fight scene where he's in prison, uh, that that one was great. Where he's yeah. just like, you know, I don't need to know any of you. What you need to know is me. And yeah. everybody just starts attacking him. It was like the most vicious king of the mountain. Yes, that's yeah. what it was. That, ever, yeah. And that's exactly what they wanted you to, to yes. see is like, I'm king of the mountain. Everybody is trying to make him, you know, get up there. He's kicking everybody off. So, yeah. That when I saw that, I was like, yes, <laughs> king of the mountain. You know? Yeah. That's that's perfect for, you know, storytelling right there. Mm-hmm. And so, yes. Uh, one of the ones that I really like that has a lot of good storytelling and fight is the Ip Man series. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. That's a really good series. Yes, it is. And the, when he's fighting 10, you know, it's like, how many do you want to fight? Ten. It's yeah. like I'm going to show you why I may will own you. Yes, and you know, and if anybody knows, that is a true story. Mm-hmm. Dead Man is a true story. That's a uh, Bruce Lee's uh, master. Yes. Oh, the other night I was watching a British mystery called Annika, and um, one of the people. She's an older woman, and they have found the guy. And he's running off. She looks to her younger assistant and goes, well, go get him. <laughs> <laughs> and, he does, and he catches up with him. The protagonist picks up a two-by-four sw- and swings it in my mind. I'm going, okay, now lean back. <laughs> and he does. Now he's overextended. Get him in the kidney. Which he does. I went, who the hell choreographed that? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody who thought about it. <laughs> well, well, you know, as we were talking about the things that, you know, we don't like that aren't believable, it made me think of Terminator. Mm-hmm. Because the storytelling in those fights is so well done. When they hit him, and he just looks at them like, what? And they're like, oh, yeah. shit, things yeah. are bad. And oh, it's just yeah. that example of what you were talking about, how they used those, you know, well, he punched through, you know, the windshield, and he didn't stop. Oh, he's probably on PCP, you know. Yeah. But this, something is wrong feeling because of that. It was, it, they were really well done. At least the first one. Yeah, like yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. Like, uh, and with ripping off Terminator, uh, Arnold, when they were talking about doing the sequels, mm-hmm. actually gave advice to the actors who were playing future Terminators. And he's like, one thing you have to remember when I did the police station scene where he's going through decimated mm-hmm. place, you never see him look at his weapon and load his weapon. He's looking around and what automatically loading. Yep. Yeah. And he's like, because that's what a machine would do. It would not look to load. It would continue mm-hmm. scanning for targets, mm-hmm. and it would be automatically loaded with without mm-hmm. doing what we do, which yeah. is hands follow eyes. You know? Yeah. Right. Yes. And uh, okay, go ahead. So I I just finished the first season of Resurrection, <laughs> and. Talk about swordplay. <laughs> oh my god. It's swordplay and horsemanship, the whole thing. Awesome. Swordplay is another really hard to choreograph fight scene, I would think. Yeah. Unfortunately I don't have experience in that, but I've I know somebody who's actually he's done the choreography for the movie Hook and uh, he he told me it's it's a lot. To just to make sure nobody Safety gets her yet, yeah. safely, <laughs> yes. to make sure nobody gets her. Um, and he he's actually one of the top uh, swordsmen in uh, California and a choreographer of you know swordplay in movies. So that's how he you know he got hooked. 
and uh, one of my instructor, one of my mentors who taught me uh, fight choreography, he was actually in the movie Hook with him. And I mean, you can't see him. He's out, he played one of the pirates, but he's uh, one of the stuntmen there. And he was like, yeah, like every day people were just swinging these swords around and I was like, yeah. So, but yeah, but it takes a lot to make sure you don't, you know, kill each other. Just like in the movies, like you would see, um, let's just take, uh, what was that movie with, uh, uh, oh gosh, he played Achilles. I can't remember his name. Troy. Who was it? Troy. Troy, thank you. Uh, in Troy, like when you see all these people fighting the swords and big crowds, yeah, that takes a lot of choreography because... You know, there's some are stuntmen and some are just extras in the movie. And you gotta make sure that nobody gets hurt. And if you would notice the camera, it only focuses like on the front of the fights. And those are the stuntmen or the actors that are trained to do it. In the back, you won't really see the focus. Yeah, you'll, you'll see a lot of that. You'll see a lot of ah, You know, but the camera is focused on right here where the stuntmen is getting stabbed or beat up over here, stunt man's getting beat up over here. Um, the two main actors or whatever are fighting right here. That's all you'll see, so you won't pay attention to everybody in the background just swinging you know, those swords. Can't they use swords that don't have the blades sharpened and stuff, or like really blunt ones? Blunt yeah, edges. but the blunt so, ones. Yeah, but you can get them So it's <laughs> interesting in Resurrection that they have a disclaimer at the front say, no animals were hurt in the filming. Yeah. <laughs> they don't say anything about the actors. Oh, yeah, no, the actors are well, they, you know, they can't really say that because that's what we signed up to do. Disclaimer, <laughs> many actors were hurt. I mean, they did that for Roar. They did that for Roar. None of the lions were hurt, but a lot of actors and extras and the people on set, everyone was mauled by lions at some point. Oh. All right. well. Un unrelated, sorry. But, so back on the topic of like realistic fight scenes. So obviously we have a lot of things where it's like the one, our hero fighting like 50 guys. Yeah. At what point does it get ridiculous? Because a lot of the times in a lot of the martial yeah. arts movies, you have the people like shadow boxing, waiting their turn to go fight the main guy, and they're all essentially just like a circle. Yeah. And we know if a bunch of people are going to fight one person in real life, it's yeah. not going to go that way. Kill yeah. Bill. Bill. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, that, that's at the, what point does that get ridiculous? Uh, trying to do the, the the moment where only one person attacks out of fifty is when it's uh, ridiculous. Yeah. So that's another, you know, I have a friend who's also a fight choreographer. That's his pet peeve and my pet peeve. Whenever we watch, you know, the good guy stand in the middle of 50 guys and they're like, one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, wait your turn. Yeah, wait your turn. With, like, with why? A, with what a you very doing? important shout out before they charge so you know they're coming. Yeah, and then you got to <laughs> shout so I can turn around and... <laughs> Well, you know, what about the guys who keep staying, waiting their turn? After he's kicked 10 of your friend's asses, wouldn't you leave? <laughs> I mean, you're like, I have an appointment. Yeah. No, no, no. You see, the evil boss has, you know, the uh, clear <laughs> rule. If you run away, you get shot. So take the your beating. Let take the beating. Sounds I saw a movie with uh, Tashiro Mifune in it where he was teaching a younger samurai about not how to use a sword the guy was obviously already an expert but how to be in a battle because uh, he had pissed some guy off and he had sent eight of his guards to go deal with him and he says uh, and the two of the guards start to back away and uh, the young man starts chasing him he says no charge them let the cowards run fight the people who want to fight <laughs> yeah. yeah and for some reason all of them want to fight and even though I just kicked 15 of your guys' butts, you know, but that's okay. Yes. One of, so one of my friends has a theory when it comes specifically to Batman mm -hmm. um, and why he always fights so many head, henchmen at once, and that is that uh, it's to still tell the story that they know Batman won't kill them, mm -hmm. but their boss will. And better off to get their asses handed to them mm -hmm. than they are to get killed. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting theory. theory. But it's yeah. also, it's, it's a little bit of a, a, a yeah. joke. Because, you know, I don't know if you know that. Like, I'm not really a big fan of Batman. I'm not more of Superman. <laughs> 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 but the way, and this is, it's off topic, but it's a little joke. 
Um, Batman, you know, he will see guys loading boxes into a van and beat the shit out of them until they're bleeding and like spitting out blood. But when it comes to their boss, he's like, I'm just gonna arrest you. <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay, I'm gonna do things by the law. And, uh, that's, a, that's a joke I always have. Like, he'll beat the crap out of his henchmen, but not the Joker. Huh? Now he's going to bankrupt the Joker by having the Joker pay a bunch of medical bills on his poor gums. Yeah. It's like, gosh, darn it. That's what it is, man. Do you have a henchman at all? Yeah. So, um, what was that? Oh, yeah. So, also, you know, pertaining to um, everything we've been talking about, uh, recent, well, not recently, a couple years ago, I did a comedy film, and it was called... Um, Call it, uh, phone it in, and it was a story about a guy on his cell phone, and he's just trying to play on his cell phone, and then me and my friends come up and we want to fight him. So he's like, "No, I'm fine. Just want to play on his cell phone." So what we do to tell a story of like why this guy is so pissed off is we break his cell phone by accident, and so he and that sets him off to fight all of us. Um, if, if I had brought my pad, I would show you guys. Ah, man, my little phone. And I don't mm-hmm. think anybody would be able to see it too good. But um, you can look it up on YouTube. It's called Phone It In. Um, he, in the story, we break his phone by accident, and so we're fighting, fighting, fighting over a phone. That's all this is. But you can tell why we're fighting mm-hmm. over the phone, because we broke it. And so at the end, one of my guys drops his phone and then the guy accidentally steps on his phone and breaks it. And so that's when the fight stops and we're like looking at the phone, we look at him and he's like, well, I see you got other things to do, so I'll leave you at it. And so he walks away and that's the end of the fight because all our phones are broken. So that's, and that's you know, that's, I don't want to say perfect storytelling, but that's what we, you know you strive to look for in storytelling. It's all about a phone. We didn't just come up and be like, hey, want to fight? I mean, actually, we did. We said, hey, we want to fight you. He's like, no. Okay, we'll figure out a way to fight you. And so his phone gets broken. So if you, if you look it up, you'll see. And maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't, but it's a comedy. <laughs> do you ever do a scene where two people come up and I gotta get this. And the other guy, goes, sure. Oh. <laughs> the fight pause. I thought about doing something like that. <laughs> that would be good. Yes. Um. So in a lot of movies and stuff, you'll have like the protagonist going on like a forty-eight hour long adventure where it's like nonstop action and violence. How long realistically could someone actually maintain that level of constant combat and running from bad guys and all that, like? In real life, wow. Got the amphetamines available? If, you, if you're on if you're on some type of drug, you can you can go for a while. But um you'll crash. Yeah. <laughs> you'll you'll eventually crash. Uh but that to that extent there it, it, it wouldn't be possible. So I don't I don't know how else to say it unless you're on drugs, you know, and you're out coked up out here. I don't know what drug would get you up there, but <laughs> but yes. Uh anything else? No? Okay, so um I think we have enough time. Yes. Uh when it also I I know that you talked already talked about weapons and like what's the extent of somebody being hurt and things like that. But what I also want to get out in the fight choreography or weapons is that we have to make sure that emotions are there also. Um, just like you brought up a good point with the Terminator. You gotta, you gotta know what you're doing. You gotta know what emotion goes where. You know, for instance, if Arnold Schwarzenegger had, you know, looked down and started reloading, well, that just killed the point that he was a robot you know he's just doing what he's got to do um if if i get shot in a film or if anybody gets shot in the film and you just pull steam seagal and just go back and then uh start fighting you know that's that's not gonna that's not gonna fly if i get hit by a shotgun 
you know, I'm going down, then maybe I'll get back up because I'm the good guy in the film, you know. But eventually, the way okay, so the way I would have choreographed that fight is Steven Seagal would have went down, you know, and then crawl, pick up his gun again, and come back. But instead, he just oh shotgun, cool, <laughs> and then you know. But emotions have to be there. That is key. And if it's not there, it's not not believable. You can't sell it. That's one of the things that I learned. That and this is the weird way that I learned that the guy teaching me, he had me punching a bag, and he's told me to talk to the bag, but tell the bag. Uh, why I'm pissed off or why I'm sad and this is something that I teach my students now um, like I need you to punch this this pad and yell at it tell it why you're pissed off today what or anything that's made and so when I did that you know tears started flowing and I started feeling the emotion and he's like there you go that's what you need for any single a uh, fight scene that you're in or that choreograph that you do, you need to make sure you can put those things together. You know, why are you punching this guy? Did he hurt you in some way? Did he hurt your family? You need to show that on your face and that'll tell the story. That'll be the, the realism of why you're fighting or why you're shooting somebody or this and this and this. You know, the realism has to be there. Uh, you just can't look at somebody, shoot them, shoot back at each other and just, you know, without emotion. Uh, so if, if you know, for instance, your name? Alicia. Alicia. If Alicia's back there and Alicia had kidnapped my daughter and I'm over here hiding and we're having a shootout, you know, I'm not just going to go. <laughs> <laughs> you, you killed my, no, you kidnapped my daughter. You know, it's not going to work. You know, yeah. I'm going to obviously be mad and sad at the same time because she has my daughter. So my my objective is to, you know, have that emotion. Like, I need my daughter back, you know, mm -hmm. shooting at her. Where's my daughter? And you're going to see it in my face, you know. And she can, you know, come back. Whatever the dialogue is, she can back like, oh, well, your daughter only has like 20 minutes to live. If you even live past this. You're gonna see that emotion change from angry to like, holy shit, she's gonna kill my daughter. You know, you gotta make sure that that's there. You know, and that's very, very, very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just remembered a stand-up comedian's uh, routine once. He he was ex-military, and he goes first into the sergeant giving lecture mode of the Commerce Block 41 millimeter anti-personnel mortar is effective to 20 yards. Uh, either side of, of its um, impact point. He says, now I watch Arnold Schwarzenegger dodging them by five yards <laughs> and never getting hit by a piece of shrapnel. The guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, movie magic. <laughs> Pop armor. So in, so in John Wick, the, where he goes into the, the uh, club mm -hmm. where the bad guy's kid is, he goes in and you see the emotion when he goes in, but then the action happens so fast, it's just mechanical. Yeah. He doesn't think, I mean, and when he shoots somebody, it's a headshot, and I mean, he, he shot him once, but then the next one, they're not going to get up. Right. It's just so, so bad, 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 fast. Yeah. And, and you know, with, with John Wick, that's one of the exceptions, right? He doesn't have to have that emotion because he's a hired killer mm -hmm. in that movie. Mm -hmm. So killing people is just another walk in the park for him. He's turned on. Yeah, point. it's just... Well, Maybe it's Tuesday. Yeah, it's yeah. another Tuesday for John Wick. So he doesn't really have to. He can just walk by, boom, 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 and then keep going. That's John Wick, mm -hmm. you know. Um, of course, it's about his dog, but again, he's a hired killer. So. It started about his dog, and then it escalated up through the emotion range. It, yeah, things went bad quickly. And so yeah, just went from bad to worse, and he's just like, whatever, guys. I'm he he done. trained extensively. Yeah, with those guns in order to do that. Oh yeah, and it takes yeah. And that's another thing. It takes a lot of training too. I'm not. You know, I can't just hire an actor who does. He doesn't have. Uh, gun safety training or anything 
got to make sure he's doing that. I've worked with a lot of actors who've done that, and it's horrible. Like, oh, cool, this is a good dog. Don't look it down the barrel. I don't care if it's a fake gun. You know? You're off the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> just, ask, like, just ask the folks on the rest. Yeah. I had a I had a guy who had a he had a shotgun and you know folks would hold the barrel down but instead he had the butt the the butt of it and just put it in like the barrel in the oh. dirt or just standing there like this. And I'm like, oh, what are you doing? I wasn't even in the armor. <laughs> oh. I was like, ah what are you doing? Loaded up on the bus. <laughs> so that's why I when I work with people, I'm just like, Do you have any type of gun training at all? Like, oh no. And then I'm like you need to go talk to this guy first. <laughs> Good, stay away. <laughs> yeah, like, don't don't do that. You know, I just I just hate when people are like, oh, cool, can I play with this gun? Well, the, thing, the complacency with blanks mm -hmm. is blanks can be deadly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, John Johnny Art Peckson in the eighties. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, he died. And if yeah. anything gets in the barrel, that's that's the problem. Well, what about Tombstone? They'll fight out a couple years ago. Yeah. Where that, the that was a live ammo issue. The, yeah. yeah. Our group was there at the parade that year, and oh, we're no. like, that wasn't a blink. Then oh, we find geez. out that the guy that came had real steel with real ammo in it because he uses the same weapon for blanks to, and real steel. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's your weapons master's issue. Why was that even allowed out here? Yeah. Yes. Also, just go, I've been next to two uh, self-inflicted wound incidences. Ooh. Both times, the people were uh, um, very familiar with weapons. Mm. They were just not careful every minute. Complacent. Both times, they were showing me how to safely unload the weapon. One shot himself with the foot, uh, the other foot, a serious round through his hand. Oh. Um, so, if you're holding a weapon, all your attention on it. <laughs> it's like when, yeah. you're, when you're doing a piece of piece of power equipment. Every bit of my attention is on my fingers. Where are all my fingers? Where's the tool? You know, Only it's got to be that kind of focus. Yeah, and that's with any weapons in a fight in a fight scene. I mean, like the knife stabbing. You know, it can happen that quick. Yeah, just like with Brandon Lee, unfortunately. Yeah, he's a pretty good actor, though, because I would have at least have gone, ow! Yeah, and I was like, why didn't you yell? But, you know, he took it like a champ and kept rolling. Uh, I was great. Yeah. Kevin Nash had a history of pretty horrific onset injuries before that. Um, he was, like, I think it was when he was with WCW, wrestling he had an injury where uh when he hit the um like the post at the corner of the ring the padding was hadn't been replaced Ooh. and he so he just hit a metal pole oh. and it broke like four of his ribs and he finished out the match right oh i mean they the fake barbed wire he got caught up in real barbed wire that was supposed to only be used like on the outside perimeter for the cameras to see. And got cut up really bad by it. I mean, he just, I think at that point, he's just a tough guy that's used to it. Yeah. Like, he did stand. Yeah. <laughs> also, he may have had, did, did Nash have a history of drug use? I forget. Is he um, one of them? I, I think he might have dabbled, but not yeah. as bad as. Yeah, yeah not as bad as some, not as bad yeah. as Randy Savage. Uh, yeah, or Stockholm. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so we have, yeah, five minutes. Anybody, any, you know, yes. I was wondering, um, I, mean, I might have missed this because I was a little bit late, but did you talk about rocket launchers at all? Like, I'm not, like, where I could find more information about what they would do or what your thoughts are about how a rocket launcher would work? Cause I don't know. I just feel like a need for something like that in one of my stories, and I don't really know much about it. I had a, uh, create a like someone with a rocket launcher or yeah like the they're you know it's, it's in the future maybe 30 years so I don't know how much more advanced but I just was basing it on that concept of you know they're shooting right mm -hmm. is that how they were like they're shooting these explosives that are landing how far away can they go for instance and things like that um to be honest like I 
we didn't know that answer oh. to that, and I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, I can advise you afterwards. Okay, <laughs> great. Thank you. He can advise you. <laughs> <laughs> I know a little bit about those things. Okay. Weston okay. Oaks might too. Who? Weston? Oh. Yeah, Weston, Weston oh, would be a good resource really? too, oh. although I'd be maybe careful asking him about studies. Of what oh, details yeah. he can and cannot say. Yeah. 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 Well, he's just, I think, had a little bit of a rough weekend with stuff like that already. Okay. Maybe. I, I won't. I don't even. I, I won't ask. Him. I'll talk to you. <laughs> Thank you. I was at an air show once, and the um, army had a center of display things. And I just walked up and asked them how about how the weapons work, and they were very forthcoming. Showed the weapons to me, broke really? them down. Um, so maybe just find someone like that. Oh yeah. And yeah. Just like, give you the information. <laughs> okay. Like the army recruiter, your local recruiter can probably point you to the right person if you mm -hmm. say I'm an author and I need this. Okay. And there's always YouTube. That's oh, yeah. Type oh, yes. in the weapon style <laughs> and then demonstration and see if you get an official version at, or, or even worse, the oh, official sure. version. Yeah. So one of the best uh, fight scenes that I remember was in one of the Bourne movies. I don't remember which one. But he comes back to his apartment and there's somebody tossing it. And so the two get into a fight and it wasn't anything flashy. It was just these two competent professionals doing their best to try to kill each other mm -hmm. with improvised weapons and things like that <coughs> until finally, of course, Byrne prevailed. Yeah. But it, it wasn't a real flashy fight. It was just how, at least how I would think. Yeah. Just realistic. It would go for real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But then also, um, this is one another one of my pet peeves, the Bourne movies, you really don't see the action. Like you see the camera shaky cam, shaky right. cam, and I'm like, what's happening? So I like I like seeing moves being done. You know, yeah, I don't like shaky cam at all. <laughs> uh, I had a, a, a director and DP like, okay, when you do the move, we're gonna move the camera. I'm like, no, you're not. Not adding to anything. You, you can't see anything, and so I, you know, I'm like. Just, just focus on do a wide shot of the move and then do pickups and you know inserts. That's that's all you need to do. So, but they want to do the shaky cam and. Uh, well, don't hold the shaky cam against the born actors though, because they went through serious training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, as far as they were concerned, it was you know something they really need to look good at. Yeah, they need to look good. It just it, you can't see it with that shaky cam, and that's very disappointing. You know, because I, I like the born movies just. Not you don't like that scene. Yeah, I don't, I don't like any of the fight scenes. All things. that work doesn't translate. I've got a scene that I'm curious about your opinion on. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen the uh, Nobody movie? Oh, oh yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Is that so about the, the Mr. Bus Mr. Nobody. Fight scene? The bus fight scene. What is yeah. your opinion on Because it seems really polarizing. What's your opinion on the bus fight scene? Um, when I watched it, I was like, Ugh. okay. So I, go, I can go both two ways. One, not realistic or two he should already be done for you know so i mean he goes there but he's like fighting four five guys mm -hmm. like four guys like four guys in a little area on a moving uh, bus on, on, on a bus right if they wanted to really they could just doggy pile him and yeah take him out so but just the action was was fine so do you feel like the realism of the sacrifice there for the sake of storytelling was worth it though uh sorry i i guess kind of maybe maybe okay yeah so yeah so i'm just kind of like you know, up in the air about it but you know it was, it was all right it was all that right. one in the bathroom scene with henry cavill for uh the initial mission mission possible. Possible. Oh. Yeah, that was a great fight. Uh, Reload the arms. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. he explained that in an interview recently. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, his muscles were cramping up. Yeah. From because they shot that scene so many times. Yeah. He was trying to stretch. When you get that fight, tight. Yeah. 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 I thought that was interesting. But yeah. Got to reload my arms. <laughs> <laughs> so so basically, which if you're gonna take any thing away from this, if you do a fight scene. Make sure the realism is there, the emotions are there. Um, obviously, my name is Robert. If you want to hire me to do a fight scene, <laughs> uh, just make sure that it's realistic and don't just write a fight scene to write a fight scene. So, and make sure it it's, has a place in your script. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, please check out D&D Journey of the 5th Edition and Ragnarok and roll a Scion Hero to Ragnarok Story. Also, check out our Patreon page for more content and behind-the-scenes things, as well as joining us for a one-shot game or two.